Hey, what's up guys? Tactical Pickle here and thank you for joining me. Let's get into the video. And today we're going to be doing an install video of the EKWB liquid cooling kit, the A240. Now this is one of their newest kits that they just launched and the difference between this kit and then their other ones is actually that this kit is made primarily of aluminum. Now the reason they chose aluminum is because it's cheaper and it's lighter. So they're able to get this kit out for almost half the price of their standard kit in the same configuration, which is the, you know, the 240 millimeter radiator dual fan setup for just the CPU. Um, I believe those run a little over $400 and this kit here was, I believe it was on sale or is priced at on Newegg at 160, which is a very good price because, uh, there's actually AIOs that run similar in price or higher, you know, depending on the brand size and all that stuff. Um, so I purchased this kit, looking forward to putting it in the beast back here. I uh, just recently upgraded my kit to the Fantex Entho Pro M acrylic. I have a video which uh, I'm sure it'll pop up in one of these corners here that uh, you can actually check it out. I go over the features of it. Um, great case. Look forward to have plenty of room to fit this in here. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you're like me or not. Um, you'd like to watch video, do research on how to install stuff before you actually get it, um, to see, you know, how it's done, what you need. So, you know, because doing a water cooling kit, you know, you could possibly have leaks and damage your hardware. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of a daunting task, I guess. So that's why I wanted to do this video. Um, I've seen videos where Jay's Two Cents and I believe Bitwit both um, reviewed this case, or excuse me, this cooling kit and uh, showed you their thermal performance and whatnot, but they didn't exactly go through on how to install it. You know, those guys have been working on computers for years. You know, they've done their own custom loops with, you know, the hard tubing, uh, which this is actually the soft tubing um, as well. So. You know, it was a little bit flexible, or the tubing is flexible, so there's, you know, its own inherent issues. But they just, you know, did the tech, or put the kit in and then, you know, went on with the video showing you the thermals. So um, I wanted to actually do a video, step-by-step -step install, what tools you need, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so great kit. Let's go ahead and uh, get on to what I chose for tools. All right, guys, now on to the tools. So one of the main things um, you're going to want to get is uh, the kit includes coolant fluid, but it's actually concentrated. Uh, so it's a bottle of, you know, concentrated. So you need actually distilled water. I believe in the um, directions there, it says you need 900 milliliters um, of water. That's how much it, uh, distilled water you want to make sure it's distilled water uh, because I believe the minerals and whatnot can uh, adversely affect the cooling. So you want, want to make sure it's distilled water. I picked this up, I think, for 88 cents at Walmart for a full gallon. Um, next up, you're going to want something to mix your um, fluids in. So I chose this because it actually goes up to 1,000 milliliters right here. Uh, which we're going to be uh, hitting it, but I'm actually probably only going to do uh, probably 200 milliliters at a time because that's a smaller reservoir. And uh, during the uh, initial fill up stage, you're only going to be, you'll fill it up and then you'll have to cycle the pump. So it'll push the water through the system, stop it, fill it up again, and uh, keep repeating that process until, you know, it's full. So, I'll probably do it in small steps. Uh, and then I got this little uh, measuring cup here that uh, does milliliters up to 60 milliliters. So that'll be good for our coolant, measuring it out in uh, the smaller doses to mix it. Cause I believe it's a, a 10 to one ratio. So it would be 10 milliliters of the coolant per every 100 milliliters of um, our distilled water. You know, mix it up um, a funnel. That's just in case uh, I purchased that just in case uh, I run into any issues of where I decide to mount the um, reservoir if I have any issues with being able to access it and fill it up and 
whatnot. So I chose that. Um, you'll probably want paper towels just in case, you know, you can layer the area around uh, where your pump and everything is just in case uh, you spill. You don't want to get it on your hardware. Um, a Phillips head screwdriver. That's going to be used for obviously installing your uh, fans and your radiator and uh, anything else that you might need a Phillips for. And then um, scissors. So scissors are going to be used for cutting your tubing. Um, now... You're, you might want to get a measuring tool, you know, a ruler or something, or just kind of a marker or tape or something, because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plan out your loop before you do any cutting. Um, I don't know how much extra tubing is actually supplied within the box, uh, but definitely measure twice, cut once type thing. So um, a marker would probably be pretty handy. So I got a pen right here. It's a Sharpie marker, fine tip. Uh, good idea. That way you can mark on your tubing where to cut. All right, now on to the next step. Let's. Uh, so the next step, what you're going to want to do is actually prep your case and your motherboard and everything. Get it ready um, for installing uh, the new water cooling system. So what you're going to want to do is you're probably going to want to remove uh, both your side panels, so front and back. Uh, that'll give you access to the back of your motherboard. Um, you're going to want to remove your stock. Well, obviously, first thing you're going to want to do is power down your system. Mine's still on. Uh, but you're going to want to power down your system, unplug it, remove all your cables and everything in the back, um, and then move your side panels, and then uh, remove your stock CPU cooler or uh, whatever CPU cooler you have in there. I still have the um, Hyper 212 LED in there installed. Um, but... I was running into a clearance issue because I don't know if you guys notice or not, but uh, I do have something installed down here, which uh, I will get to either in a separate video or later in this video. It's a pretty cool little mod that I've been uh, working on with my 3D printer. Um, so you're going to want to remove that. And then uh, another step you're going to want to do is remove all your power cables connected to your motherboard. And uh, as well as your power cable to your motherboard, all your uh, CPU power, power to your um, peripherals, your hard drives and everything. Uh, if you have a modular case, uh, excuse me, modular um, power supply, you can actually just disconnect those plugs uh, to your power supply. But you're going to want to remove all the power going to the motherboard because what's going to happen is later in the video when we're installing... Um, when you need to power the CPU pump, or uh, excuse me, the pump itself for the water, uh, you're going to attach a jumper to your main motherboard power supply, and it's going to act as if it's attached to the motherboard, uh, motherboard so it can supply power to at least one SATA cable, or excuse me, one SATA power connector that then you will connect your pump to. And you're going to want to cycle your um, power supply a few times and you're not going to want to keep sending the power to, you know, your motherboard, your um, CPU or your graphics card or, you know, your hard drives and all that stuff. Because I believe you have to cycle it five or six times and uh, on and off, which it's much easier to just disable everything. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that now. All right, now we have the case prepped. As you can see, have the old cooler removed, uh, remove my graphics card, uh, remove the power to my motherboard, as well as this is to the graphics card. Uh, CPU up here was disabled um, or unplugged and uh, cleaned off the old thermal paste from my CPU. So now the next step we're actually going to do is mount the back plate to um, the back of the motherboard. And uh, now you have two options for this. One, if your motherboard is installed in your computer, you can actually remove it and do it on a flat surface, or you're, you can do like what I'm about to do and install it while it's already in the case. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we're going to need. So I actually have the 66, or excuse me, the 7700K i7, which is Intel's LGA 1151 socket. So um, for that, it calls out um, this specific 
back plate here um, for the LG 115X. So any in that series of uh, CPU mounting um, there. And then there's also this rubber gasket here. Now this rubber gasket here, there's actually this inner piece of rubber right here that um, needs to be removed for the LG1151, or excuse me, LG115X socket series. So for my specific um, CPU series, the rubber gasket needs to look like this. There we go. Ah. Um, I'll try and put pictures in the video uh, just because I know it's difficult to see. Uh, sometimes my lighting is not the best in here, but I will try and attach pictures in the video just so you guys can see. And then uh, we're going to need this packet of hardware. It says EK XLC Predator uh, Precision Mount. So this is going to include all the hardware that, we go in, uh, that we're going to need to install uh, for the backplate. So let's go ahead and turn the computer around. All right, so now that we have the back of the um, case off here, we have our motherboard and CPU, uh, the behind CPU exposed. Um, now, the reason I chose to leave my motherboard in there is because a lot of these newer cases, uh, nicer cases, they actually have a huge opening here that allows you access to the rear of your motherboard, specifically behind the CPU for um, situations like this for mounting different um, braces and uh, mounting back plates and whatnot to your CPU for the range of coolers that are out there. So that's why I chose to leave it in there, a lot less work, making it easier. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the rubber gasket and uh, this little triangle here at the base of the rubber gasket, uh, you're gonna wanna line up here with um, this little notched out part down here. So you're gonna try your best to fit it in place um, and line up the mounting holes here, 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 and here, uh, because that's where your fasteners are actually gonna come through and attach to the back plate. So now we take the back plate here. Um, what you're gonna wanna do, same idea. You got this little um, nub right down here, similar to this here. Um, you're gonna line it up and place it here uh, to mount it. And it's okay if you don't get it perfect right away. Um, you can actually adjust it. So now that that's in place, this part is where it's gonna get difficult to show on camera, um, at least the way I'm doing it, is uh, you're gonna take one of these standoffs here. Oh, there we go. These are actually what's gonna, the water block's gonna mount to. So, all right. Now I'm just setting that down here so I can show you what you need to do. Um, so on the reverse side next to the CPU, you're gonna take one of these uh, standoffs here and you actually have to place a nylon washer, which is included there. Um, so you got your nylon washer on the base there and let's see if I can do this. All right, so <laughs> this is pretty difficult to do on camera, uh, but I'll try my best. Um, I was fiddling with it. I was in a, having a tough time getting it together. And um, it must be noted, I wanted to point it out, um, the standoff that I showed you before, let me grab that here. This was the standoff that I showed before. Um, after fiddling it for, uh, I don't know, a few minutes, I realized that this is actually the incorrect standoff. So I wanted to point that out. Um, the standoff that you want uh, for the LGA115X CPU series is this one. And if uh, the difference with this one, there's actually a larger um, standoff down here that'll actually fit through your motherboard as well as this rubber gasket. I was having a tough time. I was like, why is this not working? I'm glad I'm not recording because then I'll look like an idiot. So um, yeah, you want these longer ones. There's uh, two different styles on the bag. So you definitely want the longer ones here um, for the LG1151 or 5X 
series anyone in there. So let's go ahead and uh, try this again. There we go. Um, still too difficult to do on camera. Um, I kept bumping it and whatnot. But uh, as you can see, I managed to get the standoff through here. Nylon washer on the other side. So our rubber gasket's installed. Next is the back plate here. So what you're gonna wanna do is this hole, you're gonna line up with that mounting um, hole there, like that. And then uh, reach around to the other side and you're gonna slowly thread the standoff in till it catches. Now you wanna do it not super tight yet, um, but enough that uh, you know you have your mounting bracket in place and the easier step would be to do opposite corner down here so that it fully holds the um, bracket in place. So once again, the nylon washer there, and then you're gonna feed it through. Okay, make sure it's all lined up. Uh, rubber gasket, you got it all in place. Let's go. Here, mounting bracket through. All right. There. Now that we have the back plate mostly in place, the other two holes should be relatively easy to actually line up. You can kind of adjust your rubber gasket here um, to make sure everything's in place. So. we have all four of them temporarily installed, um, not fully tightened down. What you're gonna wanna do is you wanna tighten it in an even, you know, a, a star pattern. So this corner to that corner, that one, and then that one. And uh, the instructions just say, tighten it until um, you run out of threads. So uh, you wanna do this by hand. Each one of the, the screws here um, has actually its, uh, it's got these thumb screws right here attached on the standoff so that you can tighten it down by thumb. They don't recommend that you use tools, so let's go ahead and tighten it all down. All right, now that we have our four standoffs installed right here, this is what it looks on this side, um, it's time to actually prepare the CPU for the install of the water block, which is really light. Um, so. Please note, this needs to be removed before you install it or you're not going to cool your CPU at all. So <laughs> just note, uh, let's go ahead and remove that right now. And as you can see, it's a really nice brush aluminum finish, uh, nice and smooth. Looks like I might have had some, uh, I have some residual adhesive on uh, from the sticker on there. So you can just take a alcohol pad and uh, wipe that off of there. So it sits nice and flat. So what you're going to need for this uh, step is obviously you need the water block here. Um, you're going to want to remove the black uh, back on there. And uh, yeah, so nice water block here. Um, it's really light. Uh, you're going to want these four springs. Uh, those are actually going to sit on the standoffs there um, for tightening down. You're going to need these four caps. Uh, they're actually screws. Oh, sorry. A little out of focus there. So you'll need these four. Those are actually going to screw onto these ends and compress the water block into place. And uh, lastly, you're going to need um, some CPU paste. So they actually supply. Um, this is the EKTIM uh, ectotherm. So I'm actually just going to use this, the supplied uh, thermal paste, uh, but you're welcome to use any uh, thermal paste that you prefer. Um, I know there's a lot of different brands out there and great videos on discussing what's the best ones. Um, so first things first, we need to apply, um, make sure your CPU is clean. I already did that step, uh, but you want to make sure that uh, you're going down onto a clean surface. Um, and then now uh, you're going to go ahead and install your thermal paste. So there's many schools of thought related to CPU paste um, 
So we're just going to go with a good amount there. Now for this step, you're probably going to want to do it uh, laying down, uh, laying the case down on its side. So let's uh, go ahead and cut to that. Now that we have the case on our side and uh, the CPU paste installed, the next step is placing the water block onto the standoffs here. So let's go ahead and place it on there. So it should self align based off of, uh, you know, what CPU socket you are. So there's wiggle room that they have inside there based on the CPU socket um, so that it can be used on different things. But since our standoffs are in a specific place, all you have to do is make sure you slide it on each four corner and it should line it up properly. And you're gonna want that EK uh, water block logo facing out uh, towards the bottom of your motherboard uh, RAM side. So that, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure you can place it in any direction you want, but that's the preferred method. And the next step is to take your four springs, grab them, uh, your four springs, and you're gonna place it on each one of the corner standoffs here. And uh, there you go. Just like before, you're gonna grab your four uh, thumb screw um, here, these four, and uh, you place it on each corner. There we go. Uh, just start to tighten it down a little bit till you feel it catch. And uh, just like that, make sure you go to each corner. All right, and then come on, get on there. Right, why are you? All right, there we go. There we go. Now it's catching. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do the same thing that we did before. Is um, you're gonna do one corner, tighten it down a little bit, and then you're gonna move to the opposite corner, tighten it down a little bit. Then you're gonna move up to this corner here, tighten it down a little bit. Then you're gonna move to this corner, tighten it down a little bit. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna keep doing that till they're all fully tightened. And what it's gonna do is you're gonna give even pressure, um, slow even pressure, there will slowly spread out your thermal paste underneath the block and uh, you know it'll spread it out evenly so that you get a nice cool CPU. So there we go. Start pattern. Maybe like what, two to three turns then back up top. Keep going. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then back up to the top. Three, one, oh, so this one's nice and tight. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so back up top. Now just go ahead and at this point, go all the way down to it uh, can't turn it anymore. Now you don't want to reef on it. You just want to make sure you get to the spot where it uh, won't tighten any further. Double check this corner. Okay, this one's nice and tight. Now this corner. We're nice and tight there. And uh, this one's got a little ways to go. So, okay. Now that we got nice even pressure, our uh, water block's installed. Now onto the next step. All right, so the next step is we're gonna prepare the radiator um, to install. So what you're gonna need for that is obviously you need the radiator. Um, Inside the radiator box there actually is included uh, your fasteners for installing your fans as well as the radiator to the case. Um, you need your two fans. Uh, these are actually really nice 120, oop, shoot. <laughs> um, really nice 120 millimeter fans. Uh, they actually go up to 1850 RPM, which is uh, very good. They're high, uh, high static pressure uh, CPU fans, which are really nice. Um, so you need both of those as well as, uh, you're going to need a screwdriver cause you're going to, uh, install the radiator into the case and they are Phillips head screwdrivers. 
And then lastly, you need two of your aluminum um, hose fittings, which are actually going, we're going to be attaching right here and here onto your radiator. So, all right. So let's go ahead and pull the little um, compression fittings um, for our tube here. So they're really nice, they're aluminum. Um, so the side that we're going to be installing onto um, our radiator is actually right here, threaded side. There's a little uh, O-ring there that's actually going to impress, uh, compress, uh, which will help avoid leaking. All right, so now on to prepping your radiator. Uh, we're gonna install the compression fittings into our uh, radiator slots right here. So, um, I just tried to do this. Uh, this is actually a second take. Um, and I noticed something that I wanna point out. Um, these are compression fittings. And uh, in the directions, it tells you to, you know, take the compression fitting and thread it on there till, and tighten it down till it uh, compresses the O-ring right there. So I did that. And then it got me thinking, these are compression fittings and you're twisting it tight you're actually going to twist the compression part down. So I tried to um, take off the fitting and it actually compressed down so far. It got really stuck and it took me about 15 minutes. Um, I did damage uh, this fitting a little bit um, before it finally broke loose and uh, I was actually able to get um, this off here. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take these off prior to installing uh, the barb fitting into your radiator. So now let's work on installing those barbs into our radiator here and here. So I went ahead and I took both of the compression fitting caps off. Um, that way I don't run into the same issue that I just had. I'm doing my best to, cause this is my first time doing this. so. I'm trying to share my failures as well as my uh, successes uh, in installing this. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna feed your uh, barb end of the compression fitting in there uh, and tighten it down. And it does have the O-ring in there uh, that's going to compress as you tighten it to give you that watertight seal. Now, a useful tip uh, for this stage is uh, if you have an old mouse pad the rubber side that usually sits on your desk. Uh, if you take that and actually um, wrap it around the threads here, it'll allow you to tighten it um, all the way down without A, damaging the fittings, or B, damaging your uh, fingers, because uh, sometimes these threadings can be really sharp. So that's a useful tip. Um, this is, uh, I actually use this for a bunch of different things when I need to loosen or tighten um, the rubber gives you a good grip on many different surfaces. Having a tough time with like a bottle, of, uh, like a jar of pickles or something. Mouse pads are great as well. So just a little useful tip. So uh, that's one of them installed. We're nice and tight there. So let's go ahead and uh, install the second one here. So get our handy dandy mouse pad and uh, Make sure we're nice and tight. Our, uh, looks like we're pretty compressed there on both sides, so the radiator barbs are set. All right, so now we're going to be installing our fans onto our radiator. Now, uh, these are actually really nice fans. Um, so with this, I'm actually gonna be doing it in a pole configuration on my radiator. So I've already decided uh, that I'm going to be mounting my radiator in the front of the case. Um, I have this 140 millimeter fan on the front that is actually going to stay. And then I'm going to have my um, fans on my radiator set to the pole configuration. So I'll be pushing in air with the big 140 millimeter fan um, and pulling the air through with uh, these two 120 millimeter fans. Um, so I've decided that my radiator barbs are going to be towards the top. So it's going to be in this orientation here. And uh, for cable management purposes, I'm actually going to have 
both of my fans. Um, so it's going to mount to my radiator like this, and I'm going to have both of my fan uh, cables come out on the back side. So as it's installed like that, um, in my case, I will actually have to, looks like, remove my uh, disk drive there, um, which is no big deal because I can do that in my case. Um, I'll actually have these coming out of the back side towards the back of the motherboard case um, so that I can route them as I see fit and a nice clean look. So let's go ahead and get the other fan out. So, okay, so here we go. Got both of our fans. So the nice thing about this is here, um, both fans do come with their own set of fasteners, but since we're going through uh, this end of the fan to the radiator, um, they actually include longer screws inside the main CPU case, or excuse me, the main kit for this water cooling kit here so that uh, you'll want to use these longer screws. They're actually, uh, comes with its own Allen wrench, they're Allen head uh, fasteners. So, um, looks like uh, we're gonna do that. Okay, so, you're lining up your fans. And uh, so one thing to note, I was looking at the fan here. Um, it doesn't actually have any markings on the direction for which way the air comes in, you know, up and forward. Let's see if I have... Uh, oh, here's my old uh, CPU fan here, um, right here that I took off the Cooler Master. And uh, on the top here, uh, you have an up and forward arrow that shows you the direction of where the air is going. So with this right here it's showing that this is the top and the air is going to pass through the fan that direction so um when i was looking at these fans here they actually do not contain that marking so uh, one thing that i have noticed is that um air actually passes through the open side uh, so it comes in on this side that's open and uh, is pushed out of the front usually where they have, I guess you would say, the grill uh, for the motor. So that's a, a good way to mark it. So if we're doing it in a pole configuration like I'm doing, you're going to want these uh, grills on the outside, not towards the radiator. So we got our kit of fasteners here. We're just going to go ahead and dump it out. So. So you're going to want these longer ones because they're actually going to have to go through the fan all the way down into the radiator. Uh, so you can hand tighten it. And uh, I need to reverse that because I realized that I want my fan cable to come out that direction there. So let's go ahead and so we're all nice and lined up. So there and then same kind of pattern as uh, before when we were doing the CPU, um, you know, you're gonna do one corner, then do the other corner um, so that it, uh, one, it'll hold it in place with only two screws. So it'll make installing the rest of them much easier. And uh, it also provides even pressure when you go to tighten it down, um, which isn't a huge deal for the fans on the radiator. Um, but, you know, it's something nice to do on anything that you tighten down. You just do equal pressure, uh, or opposite corners, um, and that'll keep, you know, keep it nice and tight. Make sure all of them have equal threading into whatever it is you're screwing down. So, there's one fan fully installed. Now we just have to install the second one. So thread that in there. Nice thing is you can just butt this fan up against that one and uh, it should give you your mounting locations pretty easy. 
Uh, so, whoop, there we go. Get the fastener through there. Tighten it down. All right, that here. Okay. So there we go. Let's go ahead and tighten that. Tight. Okay. Tight there. Tight there. And tight there. All right, so now our radiator is good to go to install. Now I want to touch on something that I kind of um, glazed over really quickly. I'd mentioned that I'm actually installing this on the front of my case. Now, um, I, I was never doing this before. I thought that it would be smarter to mount the radiator on the top of the case. Um, because I thought that the radiator would actually block a bunch of the cool air coming in that, you know, would then cause your GPU to get really hot. Um, so I decided to do a little bit of research and I watched a video that Jay's Two Cents did as well as Bitwit. And both of them had very thorough testing done on the placements of the radiators, uh, types of graphics card, whether it's blower, or open air. And uh, they posted their thermals and found that um, the best way, uh, the best placement for your radiator um, is in the front of the case. Uh, as it's drawing in air and cooling it down, it's not displacing enough hot air into the case to actually affect the cooling of the graphics card. I believe that it was only like one or two degrees that it affected uh, placing the radiator here versus the top, whereas uh, when the radiator is placed at the top, it caused about a 10 degree difference on the CPU. Um, cooling wise, uh, 10 degrees, it was hotter at the top because you're actually pulling in hot air from the GPU versus cool air from outside of the case. So that's why I chose to mount it in the front. I will actually uh, link the videos down in the description below for both of those. Uh, you know, if you guys want to check it out as well. Um, Another thing to note is actually your case choice. Um, you want to be able to make sure that your case can actually handle a water cooling kit uh, because some mid tower uh, mid tower PCs can't um, a lot that have uh, all the different cages up front for either your mem uh, your memory, like your hard drives and your SSDs, as well as if they have um, the disk drive up top. Nice thing about my cases is it's actually removable, which I need to do to actually fit the radiator in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll cut to installing the radiator. Now that we have the optical drive removed from up here, we can actually start to install the radiator. So it's a fairly easy process. Um, it's just like as if you were mounting um, 120 millimeter fans on the front. So let's go ahead and uh, so on my case here, we got plenty of uh, leeway to move these all around. The next step now that we have our radiator installed right here is actually hooking up the fans. Um, so you got your two fan connectors right here. Um, the nice thing about this kit is they actually supply you with this Y cable, but it actually has a connection for uh, three fans here. Um, so you're capable of, you know, doing three fans um, 
to there. So what I'm actually going to do is just attach two fans and I'm going to connect it to my CPU number two fan header right here so that uh, it's controlled that uh, the fan on here is controlled by the CPU temperature um, and fan CPU fan header number one is actually going to go to my pump um, so that it can regulate the pump based off of that. So pretty simple. You just connect your uh, fans into here. Now, one of these is actually labeled uh, fan with speed signal. So it has an extra pin so that it can read the speed of the fan. Uh, so either one of your fans plugged into there should work fine. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and connect that to there. Um, and I'll cable manage this better at a separate time. Um, just right now, we're going to go ahead and just getting this all installed. So, all right, so connect that guy to the motherboard and just kind of set it out of the way for now. Uh, right here. So now your fans are installed. Now onto the next step. Next thing to that we're going to do is actually install the pump reservoir. Now, there's a couple considerations to take into. Um, one, for the placement of your um, pump here and reservoir is actually down to the length of your graphics card. So you're going to have a graphics card installed here generally. So, um, you know, placing this in this general location, um, it's going to be different for some cases. As you can see, this one here actually has a PSU shroud. So other cases that don't have this are actually probably better suited for mounting the pump reservoir down here. Uh, but mine unfortunately has the PSU shroud, which I'm okay with um, because I actually have a mod in progress where um, right here, I 3D printed a bracket that um, I'm gonna mount this here. This is actually a P uh, PCIe, um, extension cable and uh, I'm going to vertically mount my graphics card. I actually have it all modded um, out here. I removed a section here, 3D printed a brace bracket uh, that the back of my graphics card is actually going to come out to and mount to. Um, and then right here is where that's going to mount. So um, I don't have to worry too much about the placement of my uh, pump as long as I don't um, put it right here, which I can't generally because uh, I have this grommet here where my power cables are coming out. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to consider that. Um, plan out your placement and everything before you actually get to installing. Remember your graphics card because uh, you don't want to have to um, install everything, get it all filled up with fluid and then, you know, go to put in your graphics card and you can't because um, it interferes with your pump or you know, your pump interferes with the placement of that. So um, a couple of things that you're going to need for uh, installing this is um, it comes with this bracket here that your pump can actually mount onto and it's spaced out um, to fit on any mounting place that will take a 120 millimeter fan. Now, a lot of cases, they actually have a spot located at the base of the case uh, right at the back of your um, power supply that is usually set up for a 120 millimeter fan. So that's what uh, this bracket's here for. So your pump will actually mount to this brace like that uh, through the fasteners that are included. And then uh, you go ahead and mount this to the case. Now, given how my case is set up, I can't use this bracket. So I'm gonna actually have to just mount this directly to um, the holes that are located here on my PSU shroud. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then uh, another thing that's included, which is really nice, I was actually looking at it and um, <laughs> the cable for the pump isn't very long and they recommend that you actually plug that into your CPU header, which on most motherboards is located towards the top of the motherboard. And as you can see, that little three inch cable isn't going to do it. Luckily, they do supply you with an extension cable four pin uh, that should actually give you 
plenty of room to run your cable uh, from the pump up to the CPU header, which is a really nice touch. Um, very awesome. They supply you with, uh, you know, the Allen wrenches that you needed. Uh, these are all the fasteners that you need for attaching your, um, excuse me, the pump to the bracket if you need to, and then the bracket to your case or just the bracket or uh, just the pump to the case itself. Uh, they do also mention that you may need to drill four holes um, to actually mount this in case, you know, depending on how your uh, case is set up. Um, so you can do that as well. Um, you may not be able to mount your radiator in the front and because, uh, you know, depending on how your case is set up, you may need to have to mount your pump in the front and then obviously you couldn't have your radiator there. So you would then have to um, place it at the top, which to help with that, you know, you might need to install, you know, more case fans in the front just to get um, a lot more airflow going through. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and then uh, we'll get on to the next step. So now that we have the reservoir installed and uh, it uh, attached to our CPU fan header, uh, one thing to note is um, don't cable manage everything just yet uh, because when we go through the process of actually filling up the reservoir and cycling the pump, uh, you're going to have to disconnect this here and use this supplied um, cable here. And what this will do is this is going to plug into the SATA um, into a SATA uh, power connector. And then this plug will actually fit into uh, this right here so that you can cycle your pump uh, by turning your uh, turning that on and off. So the way that uh, you want your loop to be set up is the hot uh, the hot coolant you're going to want to come from um, out of your CPU uh, block into the reservoir and it's going to go into the reservoir and then out of the reservoir you're going to want it to go to the radiator and then out of the radiator the cool air will actually the cool coolant will actually then go back into your CPU pump or uh, the CPU block completing your loop. Um, that's what they define as the best setup for your loop. So um, for this step, you're going to want to get your tubing and uh, uh, take off all of your, uh, all this stuff shifted while I was doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and take off all your compression fittings here and set those aside. Uh, so I haven't taken them off here, taken them off to the radiator, and then taken off the CPU pump, uh, the CPU block. So now I'm going to put up a uh, graphic here of uh, just a picture of what the loop will look like so that you guys can go ahead and take a look at it and get a complete understanding because it, it's a really nice showing of, uh, you know, cold air, hot air, and the flow that they recommend. All right, so the first path that we're gonna set up is going to be from the CPU block um, here to the pump and reservoir. So this is gonna be the heat transfer. So this is where the hot coolant is gonna come out into the reservoir. So, um, let me see if I can move the camera a little bit. There we go. So we're gonna actually, the way that my pump set up, um, it is labeled on the side in and out. So the in pump um, nozzle is actually a little bit higher than the out. So you're gonna run from this side here on the CPU block, which is the out. You're gonna run it out from here to the in. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your um, tubing and kind of figure out how you want to route it here and you want to do it best you can so that there's no um, creases or anything um, inside the route so that it has a nice smooth flow so and let's see so 
that looks like a good setup and I'm actually going to be doing a uh, little modification later on I got some standoffs and some uh, 3d printing ideas that I'm going to do to actually uh, create a way to mount the tubing but uh, as for right now we're going to go like this and so we're going to need it to bend back into here so that looks like about a good amount right there. So we're gonna add just a little bit extra um, for the tube itself, um, just to be safe. Uh, you can always trim it. So if you go a little bit longer, it's better than too short. So you could just go ahead and cut your tube, hopefully nice and straight. Set the remainder aside. All right, so now that we're going to actually install um, the tubing, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually put your compression fitting on with uh, the threads facing um, the thing you're actually going to, uh, the compression fitting. Um, that way <laughs> you don't have to bother taking it back off again. Um, Okay, so uh, just a fair bit of warning. This is kind of a pain in the butt to do. Uh, you may want to actually lay your case down uh, when doing it here. Um, so I'm actually going to do what they recommend. Um, inside the book here, it actually recommends that uh, if you're having a tough time getting them over the fitting, you can actually heat them up a little bit uh, in warm water. So, all right, I'm going to do that right now. I'm gonna go get some warm water so that I can actually uh, make them a little easier to slide on. All right, so I went ahead and uh, tested it off camera uh, just to make sure everything went smoothly, which it did. So all I did is I took a cup of uh, water microwaved it for about 45 seconds to a minute depending on your microwave and that heated up sufficiently enough and uh, so we got it over the fitting here and uh, it's a little bit of work you just got to keep twisting and kind of push in just to make sure that uh, the end of the tube mates all the way with the back of the connector and then you slide on your compression fitting and then you go ahead and tighten it all right, you want to get it nice and snug so you don't have any leakage. All right, so there's that end. So this end is going to go into the in because we're dealing with the hot water or the hot uh, coolant side. So um, we're going to have to dip it in the water. You don't need to leave it in there too long, usually about up to 30 seconds would probably work, but I don't even think you need that. All right. So, yeah, that's a that's another little thing they don't tell you about when they're putting it all together. But, yeah, definitely heat up the tubing in hot water. Make sure there isn't really a whole lot of excessive uh, water on there because, you know, water is bad for electronics, which... Uh, here we go. So, it's kind of an awkward angle to be putting this on. Here. So. Okay. I got it now. It's just getting over that initial lip part. And if you don't manage to do it, like if it starts getting difficult to do, um, just go ahead and place it back in the water to warm the tube back up. Making it flexible. So there's a nice little ridge on these barbs here. That'll actually keep, excuse me, <laughs> um, that'll keep the tube from pulling out. So, go ahead, there we go. 
uh, once you get it on there, which is nice. Oh, I almost uh, did what I not wanted to do, so make sure you get your compression fitting on there um, before you install it so you don't look like an idiot and have to take it all apart. Which, granted, most of you probably won't be doing this on camera, um, like I am, uh, so you won't have people watching you as you do it. So, all right, I keep hitting the camera, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop it here, get all these installed. You guys get the basic principle. So we'll come back with it all installed. Now that we got all the tubing run, um, I actually had to move my pump back just a little bit because uh, the tubes were actually interfering with the fans on the radiator. Um, so now it's set up nice. Uh, don't got any kinks anywhere you want to make sure. Um, if you do heat up the ends of your tubing, um, after you tighten it down, give it a little bit um, and then go back through and try re-tightening each one of your fittings um, just because the uh, the ends of the tube might shrink just a little bit. You may be able to get just a little more um, of a twist on it just to make sure it's nice and secure so it doesn't leak. And uh, as you can see, this is my leftover tubing. There's, you know, a little over two feet still left. So uh, you get plenty of, um, of this tubing to actually run your loop, which is nice. So the next step is going to be, I believe, preparing the coolant. So let me get set up and I'll cut to that. So for this step, we're going to be prepping everything to start applying fluid into the reservoir. So for this step, uh, you know you're going to want your distilled water, um, about 900 milliliters. Uh, I have a gallon, so we'll have plenty. Uh, the EK cryofuel, I believe, is a, it's going to mix at a 10 to 1 ratio. Oh, excuse me, 1 to 9 ratio. So 100 milliliters of this cryofuel to 900 milliliters of distilled water. Mixing container here. Um, I just got a small measuring cup so that I can actually uh, measure it out pretty evenly um, for there. This will be for the cryofuel. And uh, then you're also going to want um, this here for the power for your pump. Uh, this is just a temporary uh, pump adapter so that you can apply power to it so you can cycle it. Uh, you're going to want that. And then you're also going to want this uh, jumper here. And what this is going to do is it's going to plug into your main motherboard power right here and it's going to trick um excuse me it's going to trick your uh, power supply into thinking that it's connected to um, a motherboard so it'll actually power up your sata uh, cables and everything um, but you want to make sure that you disconnected all the power and everything going to the motherboard and all your peripherals and everything so that when we're cycling it through the pump and everything that uh, it doesn't cause any damage or anything. So just go ahead and, uh, so you have a clip on your uh, power supply to your motherboard, uh, that cable, it'll actually have a clip on the backside and then right here, you have a little nub that'll clip to. So that's how you know your orientation. So you just go ahead and slide it onto there. Pretty easy, should clip right into place, no problem and uh, the jumper will go through. Now that's all set up. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna run, want to run a SATA, excuse me, let me get this out of here. Um, you're gonna wanna run SATA power um, close to here so that you can actually hook your adapter to it. So I'm gonna cut and actually run um, SATA to that location. I have my SATA power right here, connected to my uh, power supply, and then connected to the little SATA adapter plugged into the pump. Now, uh, you don't wanna hook up power to your power supply just yet, um, and you wanna make sure also that the switch for your power supply is off, um, because you don't wanna accidentally run your pump 
um, without anything in it because it can actually burn up the bearings. Um, so you want to make sure that you have at least the first um, amount of liquid in your pump before you actually um, turn it on. So you just go ahead and unscrew the top of the reservoir to open it up. Um, you could use a funnel if you need to, depending on the location of where your pump is actually stored. Um, the mixing cup here has a nice uh, lip right here for pouring. So I should be able to get a nice, uh, nice pour in there without having to really worry. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and uh, load this up. So let's go to the milliliter side. So I'm going to go to 200 milliliters. So if we're doing a nine to one ratio at 200 milliliters, we're going to want to do um, 20. Yeah, 20 milliliters of the cryo fuel. So that should give us a good amount. You don't want to mix too much at one time, um, you know, because you need to prime the pump and do everything. So it's easier to just do it um, slowly. Ah, sorry, I had to get my certified mixing tool, you know, just a spoon. So let's go ahead and uh, get the water. Okay. So I'm only going to do, uh, actually, let's do it slowly. All right, so... All right. Okay, cap that up. Now be very careful be, just because uh, water near your electronics. Um, got it filled up to about the 200 milliliter line. So since this is so small, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to fill this up four times, or actually no, I only need to go to the 20 mark. Because um, in total, we're gonna need 100 milliliters in here so this only goes up to 60 so that's another reason why i'm doing it in small amounts but i'm only going to go to about the 20 line with the concentrated cryo fuel so Okay, a little over 20, but not a huge deal. So go ahead and uh, mix that in there. Make sure you get it all out of there. Okay, paper towels would be good at this point, just so in case you make a mess. Let me go ahead and uh, close that back up, set it aside. And then we take our certified mixing tool just a spoon. All right. So this is at about, uh, we should have about 220 milliliters of fluid here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, fill up our pump and reservoir. Just a little, our... All right. Okay, we got a little bit of fluid coming through. So you want to fill it not all the way to the top, but all right. So we filled it up to about right there on the reservoir. And uh, now we're ready to <clears throat> prime the pump. So um, you go ahead and plug in your power supply. Uh, what you might want to do is just also double uh, again, double check that all your power is disconnected to your motherboard and all your peripherals uh, just so you don't damage them. And uh, so then you plug in your power and then you're going to hit your switch. And then you'll see it start to go and then right about there. Um, that's actually a lot quicker than I expected. Uh, so just go ahead and add some more fluid just there. 
All right. So, all right, and then uh, go ahead and hit it once more. So it may be easier to, uh, I turned on the switch for about a, a second and a half to two seconds and then shut it off. Uh, with as fast as this pump is, it seems to uh, drain this really quick. So you don't want to spend too much time uh, with the pump off, um, or excuse me, with the pump cycling without liquid in there. So we'll go ahead and uh, mix up another bit. So, Okay, 200. This part will probably all be sped up. All right, so at this point, we have enough fluid in here for it to continually run. Um, also, while this whole process is going on, double check your fittings just to make sure um, you're not leaking anywhere because uh, leaks are bad. And uh, let it slowly go. And then uh, we're gonna add some more fluid. All right. Okay, and then just a little more. All right, so that tops it off. And then you go ahead and put your reservoir cap back on. Make sure you get it on there nice and straight so you don't cross thread it. All right, so, all right. So you want to shake it just a little bit, uh, ver just to make sure that there's no bubbles inside of your uh, radiator. Uh, there looks to be like we got nice good flow. And uh, that's it. Your uh, water cooling kit's installed. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to turn off the power. Uh, since there's enough fluid in there, you're not going to have to worry about the pump being on. Um, so at that point, unplug your, uh, unplug your power, disconnect the SATA, remove your uh, little adapter here, and then replug your um, fan, or excuse me, the little extension cable to the CPU header. So you wanna make sure that your pump is connected to your CPU header and you're all installed. Now the next next thing to do is just uh, you can either cable manage and get everything all set up or you can go ahead and uh, get your computer back together and verify, uh, you know, check your temps. So I'm going to do that and then I'll uh, let you guys see the finished product. All right, guys. So conclusion time. We're all done installing the water cooling kit. It's been a few hours uh, that this has been running um, and so far no leaks, which is awesome. Played a couple games of uh, Battlegrounds. Awesome thermal performance, even overclocked at uh, 
4.6. Uh, I think the next step I might do is actually delid the 7700K and replace the thermal paste because uh, it's still not as cool as it should be with a uh, water cooling kit like this. But either way, it's a lot better than what it was. Um, vertically mounted my GPU, finally got that installed. I was super excited about that. Uh, like I said, designed my own bracket, modified the case, did all that awesome stuff. Um, one thing I'm really happy about is with the vertical GPU mounted like this, or with my GPU mounted like this, uh, no water, if there is a leak from the CPU block or anywhere, um, it actually will not hit the GPU. So that's really nice. Um, so that's the GPU is probably the most valuable thing in here, uh, I believe. So it's a GTX 1080 Ti RS edition. So plus it just looks badass. Um, so thermals on it for the G, uh, GPU with it mounted this close to the glass or uh, the acrylic. I thought I might have some thermal issues with it, but playing after about an hour or so. Uh, the max temperature that the GPU got to, even on its overclock setting, where it was hitting over two megahertz, uh, 2000 megahertz, um, we got, I believe, only to, well, I think about 65C on the GPU. And uh, under load on the CPU, it was uh, hovering about. 56 to 58 sometimes it would peak up into the 60s mid 60s and then drop back down it was only probably one core that's hitting that high and uh that's on an overclock 7700k so that's pretty impressive um which i'm pretty happy about so all in all i am super satisfied with how this all turned out great product for the 170 bucks um or 160 bucks i forget what it was but uh yeah great product um so yeah if you guys uh if you like the video go ahead and drop a like there um if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button i got a bunch of other videos more planned um if you guys want me to do a separate video kind of talking about what i did with uh my vertical gpu mount and kind of discuss that let me know down in the comments below um, if you have any questions about the video um, during the install process uh, if you're doing it yourself and you have some questions or you're looking to do it, go ahead and drop a comment below. I do my best to answer every question that I get. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, just, uh, you know, drop a comment below. Uh, and uh, check out my other videos. I got a bunch of other really cool ones. I actually just recently did a uh, case review on this case, which for a water cooling setup like this, it is great. Um, one thing I will know is if you do set up your case uh, to do water cooling, if you do choose this case, um, I'd mentioned that mounting the um, pump where I did would interfere with the graphics card. But um, where I actually have the graphics card mounted right now, there is enough room to actually mount the mount the pump and reservoir itself over in this area here so that is something to note as well um great case for the price i believe it was oh something fell out of my closet uh, i believe it was uh i got it on sale for 79.99 so excellent mid tower case it's actually larger than most mid tower cases to support all the um water cooling so all right guys um thanks for watching i hope you found the um install guide helpful um i'm betting it's gonna turn out to be fairly long because um i tried to be pretty uh specific when i was doing it and uh thorough so it might turn out to be a little bit long hopefully um it's helpful when you guys you know if you watch it and do the install yourself so all right guys uh thanks for watching and uh yeah i'll see you next video